What's up? It's Landon Castle, and I am back with a tutorial. This time with the classic North Wilkesboro Speedway, yet to be released on iRacing. I think it's coming out sometime soon in June, but we just drove on it in the Pro Invitational Series, and I learned a lot about the track. It's a very unique line. Um, I want to run you through uh, a couple things that are really important that I learned at this track. The line, because the track has a weird shape to it, the way the, the paint is, um, the way the dashes are painted on the track is a little unique, so it's a, some misleading in terms of where the groove is. Um, uh, so the line is really important. And then there's a couple iRacing um, nuggets that I found in the track that I felt like uh, are relative to, or relatable to real life at a lot of racetracks, um, and that's the seams. I wanna point out some seams that seem to really help um, the car get through the corner and they're very fundamental to making a good lap at North Wilkesboro. So let's get right into it. First I'm going to run you through a lap here at North Wilkesboro. Great little short track here. As you can see turn one and two is kind of a weird entry then you drive it off the bottom three and four uphill down the back stretch three and four there's a curb on the bottom you don't want to hit that I've done that before. Slick off a of turn four. Just a great short track kind of has some flat banking on the bottom of turn in one, turn one and two. A little bit of a progressiveness to um, to the banking though. So the most important things that I want to focus on here, like I said, were um, your turn in point, your line, and the seams on the racetrack. Um, the rest of it, I'm going to let you figure out. Brake, throttle, it's going to be car and setup dependent. Um, you know, the one thing about braking, like a lot of these racetracks, um, we liked, we've talked about trail braking and we like trail braking, but at North Wilkesboro, this car really liked to keep the brake pedal, you know, all the way around the corner. Let's start on the line. Um, as you can see here, there's a turn in point that I like to use after the start finish line, right here in the middle of the screen, you can see these dash marks. You can see these dash marks at the top groove. Um, I'd like to almost hit those marks with my right side tires on entrance to the corner. I'm not sure that I actually hit them. I think I turn in a little bit earlier, but I'm, I'm at least looking at those marks before I get into the corner. So uh, yeah, I was a little bit under them there, but that, that's a definitely a good focal point. Um, the next most important thing for your line here are these dash marks, but more importantly on my screen, you're gonna see a little faint line and we're gonna zoom in on it when we get there. A little faint line and that's a seam on the racetrack. It's really important that you run your left side tires on that seam a little bit after where this pit road entrance, you can see my cursor, this pit road entrance, or exit, I mean, uh, paint ends on the line. So about that time uh, is, is where you're going to run your left sides onto the seam. And we can use slow motion here. And I, can, I pick up the seam right here with the left side of my car, and then I'm following that seam around the corner still following the seam and then the most important thing for the corner to exit here off of two is to be on the bottom close to this white line near the grass um, i'm actually could be closer than i am um, on this lap right here you almost want to clip the grass once again here's my car on the seam left side tires are just right on top of that seam you can see the seam right in the middle of the racetrack um, like my left side tire is just running right over the crack of that seam. There's actually a little bit of grip on that seam. I don't know why. I don't know if it's if it was in their modeling or whatever, but it, that's something that's actually a real life attribute at a lot of racetracks. Seams can have some grip in them. So um, it's definitely something that translated to iRacing. All right, moving to turn three. So the turn in point into turn three the turning point into turn three is a little bit tougher. You have some signs on the wall. Um, up here, there's an orange sign, a yellow sign, a blue sign. Um, but you're really, your eyes should be kind of heading towards the corner. So it's it's hard to get a turn in um, into turn three. But really, you know, I kind of like to use this opening right here. And I know I know that this opening, when I get to this, uh, this NASCAR Cup Series sign, uh, that it's a good turn in point maybe not right at it you can definitely get a little bit later except there's a there's a bump after this sign so if you're too high for too long you're gonna hit a bump makes the car tight 
but the most important thing about turn three and four, almost even more important than the turn in point itself, again, is the seam. And the seam in turn three and four is a little bit harder to hit. It's, it's lower on the racetrack and it's a really narrow band. I'll show you exactly what it looks like. Right there, the bottom two feet of the corner. We're running over seams into the corner, but I'm looking for that bottom seam in turn three and four here. And it's just a strip of pavement about, uh, it looks like it's a foot and a half wide. And on the top of that strip, there's a seam and you want your left side tires on top of that seam. You don't really need to be below the seam up against the curb, like at Martinsville. Um, you just want your left front tire to be running over the seam, just like you see in the screen right here. Left front tire running over the stream. Looks like looks like I come off of it a couple inches. I don't I don't think you need to. I kind of pushed up a little bit, but I'm gonna come right back down onto the seam. Here you can see me. I'm inching back down towards it. We're in slow motion on top of the seam, and you wanna you wanna follow this seam around the corner almost as, as far as you can. This line around the racetrack that I'm telling you to run. This is repeatable on new tires, on old tires, like this is your go-to line. Now there's a little bit different way to drive this racetrack when you're side by side with somebody and believe it or not, the seams play a big role into that. On Sunday in the Pro Invitational Series race, we found that you could actually pass on the outside um, if, if you had a good position on someone and if you use the seams to your advantage. So I'm going to show you what that outside groove looks like. So here's the outside groove in turn three and four. See how there's a seam right there in turn three and four? Just like the one I was telling you about on the bottom. If you're on the outside of somebody, you wanna give them plenty of room, but you wanna be able to use that seam any chance that you can, because there's just a little bit extra grip on these seams. This third seam here in turn three and four, you can barely just see it. Looks like the inside of my left front tire is over the seam. If you've got a car underneath you, that's the best, that's the line you need to be shooting for to get through the corner. If you can run on that seam with somebody underneath you, then you're going to keep up just enough momentum to maybe clear them, um, whether it's on a restart or if they've got older tires and you're trying to gain position on them. Same thing here in one and two. See this seam that's coming up on this second set of dot dash lines, or on this first set of dash lines right here. Just clipping that seam a little bit. On entry now the seam goes lower the the person on the inside of you is gonna be right here um, but on exit the seam comes back up above those dash lines you can get a little bit of that seam on exit as well all right this is me battling with Denny again here and just watch where I put my left side tires here right on right along this seam is as, <clears throat> as much as I can <laughs> Every chance that I get, I'm trying to catch this seam just a little bit, and it's giving me just a little bit of position on Denny. You can see he's got his wheels turned, his car's tight. I've got the run off the corner. Here it is in three and four. So he's going to the bottom. I've got this seam right in front of my left, left front tire, trying to get the car turned down on it able to run my left front right along that seam and then catching some of this seam on the way out too those are you know every chance that you get to run run on that seam is going to be a little extra grip and as always we're going to look at some vrs data i'm going to show you the difference uh, because that seam is so important i'm i've picked out uh two different laps i'm going to show you the difference between those two laps in turn three and four uh, one of the laps is where I overdrove the corner by just a little bit and I missed the seam by a couple feet and I'm going to show you the penalty, uh, the time penalty on that lap. Um, so what happened here on this lap, you can see my lift point, um, my lift point into this corner, 1467, 1486. So. Um, so on the blue lap, I lifted about a car length later into the corner than on the red lap. And I was a half a tenth faster um, through turn one and two on this blue lap, okay? Um, going into turn, uh, coming out of turn two. I was a half a tenth ahead of myself going into turn three, overdrove by one car length. I gained a lot of time on entry um, because of that one car length. 
all the way up to a tenth. Um, so I've got myself beat by a tenth now. And on the red lap, you can see right here in the middle of the corner where we've talked about that seam where we, I've released the brakes, the car's turning through the corner. The only problem that's happened here is on the, on the blue lap, I'm three feet to the right of the red lap, which means I'm three feet on the red lap. I'm on the seam on the blue lap. I'm three feet higher than the seam. And I'm still a tenth of a second faster on the blue lap overall. But let's see what happens here. That time starts going away dramatically. You can see this slope right here. That's time. That's giving up time right there. On the blue lap, I picked up the throttle a lot later. The red lap, I was able to pick up the gas and start picking up speed. You can see it on my speed trace here. The car's pointed. It's wrapping around the seam. And the red lap gains all this speed back and more back to three hundredths of a second off. So I was, the red lap was actually eight hundredths of a second faster just on the second half of that corner, um, all because the blue lap missed the seam by three feet. So hopefully that helps. Um, hopefully you guys get to see North Wilkesboro soon. Hopefully you enjoy the race uh, on Sunday. I definitely had a blast. It's a super racy track. It was it was a ton of fun. I learned a lot. Um, you know, I'm glad we got to look over the lines and the seams on the racetrack. Those were two things that just stood out to me right away in all of my testing. I feel like there's a lot more to learn. Um, so when you get the track, let me know what you think of it. Let me know if these things helped you out. Um, and hopefully you can win some races.